The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. Welcome back to class. Today, we're hunting big game, the grand prize for storm chasers. Hollywood even makes movies about these things. When they come, they always make headlines, even though they may only last a few minutes. They can be 20 feet wide and dance harmlessly through the Great Plains, or they can be mile-wide monsters scouring the earth, destroying everything in their path. In all the weather world, there's nothing that fascinates us or scares us quite as much as the sight and sound of tornadoes. of weather scared you when you were a little kid? Lightning? Thunder? Well, I don't know about you, but for me, nothing was scarier than a tornado. And the truth is, they really are dangerous. They derail freight trains, demolish entire towns, whipping up winds in excess of 300 miles per hour. But like most things, a little information can make even tornadoes not so scary. Now, they may be the most dangerous and violent storms Mother Nature throws at us, but for a lot of people, that makes them the most interesting, too. So let's get out there with the wild winds and unravel the mysteries of the elusive twister. I'll be right here. <laughs> the word tornado comes from a combination of the Latin word tornare, which means to turn, and the Spanish word tornada, or thunderstorm. So, tornado, twister, cyclone, whatever you want to call these storms, they can mean disaster when they touch down. Our big game hunter Brandon is on the trail of a tornado now, although I'm not really sure we want him to find one. It's late afternoon here, and the air is hot and still. In the distance, dark clouds are piling up like castles in the sky. You can see them getting thicker and blacker. Now, let's keep real quiet and still, like, and watch that long finger of cloud reach down from the menacing sky. Okay, so maybe that one got away. But this is still the place where you find the really big twisters. At least that's what the guy who sold me this map said. Big twisters. Somewhere around here. This is America's heartland, the Great Plains. They say in the summer here that the corn grows so fast that you can actually see it sprouting before your eyes. Wheat sways gently in a warm breeze. Big puffy white clouds sail across a sea of blue overhead. It's pretty country, so it's kind of hard to believe that it's also known as Tornado Alley. In the United States, there are usually more than 1,000 tornadoes each year. That's more than anywhere else on the planet. And the heart of the action is in Tornado Alley which extends from Texas, across Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. It just so happens that this pretty stretch of countryside is home to the right ingredients for the severe storms that spawn tornadoes. In other words, they get the most tornadoes because they're in the right place. If you want to study tornadoes, Oklahoma is pretty much the center of the world. Here in Norman, just outside of Oklahoma City, is the National Severe Storms Laboratory. The experts here know all about severe storms and the tornadoes they produce. Here at the National Severe Storms Laboratory, we do basic research work on storms. Uh, severe convective storms, tornadoes, but also winter storms. All of the bad storms we try to understand better. Historically, our biggest area of research has been into tornadoes, particularly looking at them with Doppler radar. 
and we were pioneers in the radar research into severe weather. And that's actually the reason why the Severe Storms Lab is in this location, is that there was a weather research facility here before the Severe Storms Lab began. And research activities in the 1950s came to Norman every year because of a small airport here and because of the radar facilities that were here. This is our brand new mobile Doppler radar. Let me show you what it looks like. Of course, we have a driver and we have a navigator. We have to get to the right place. We have to get there safely. And then we have in the back of the vehicle instrumentation. There's a lot of electronics in a radar. Then back behind the cab, this is the transmitter and the receiver. This is the antenna system, perhaps the most recognizable part of the radar. There's a feed horn right there, the thing that looks like a fish hook. It focuses that radiation on the parabolic dish and it reflects it out into space. Then we stop transmitting, we wait and we listen for a fraction of a second, and we get the returns back on that parabolic dish, and then that's, that same feed horn collects all those returns, we go to the receiver, and it's processed, and that's how we see the winds inside the storm. Over the last hundred years, the death toll from tornadoes has dropped dramatically. We no longer have tornadoes that kill 100 people, which back in the 1920s was almost an annual occurrence. The research that's done here at the National Severe Storms Laboratory and at other places around the country, it does help to save lives. Thunderstorms are pretty common on hot summer afternoons, but when you get a really big one and the conditions are just right, a twister can hatch. See, in your garden variety thunderstorms, there are normally updrafts and downdrafts, which is basically just air moving up and down. But in a convective or tornado producing storm, other wind conditions are happening as well. Thunderstorms occur when warm, moist air meets cool air. The warm air rises and clouds form as the storm develops. Wild winds moving in different directions, called wind shear, cause the air to start spinning, almost like an invisible horizontal tornado in the lower atmosphere. When this spinning tube of air meets an updraft, it tilts from horizontal to vertical and tightens its spin, which increases its speed. This is called a vortex. You probably know more about how this works than you think. And I'm not quite good enough yet to do this right, but a friend of mine can help us out. This is Alex. Now let's say Alex here is a convective storm. As the air rises, it starts to spin. Now watch what happens when she tucks her arms in close. Her rate of rotation increases dramatically, and this is called conservation of angular momentum. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks, Alex. Now the same thing happens in our atmosphere. As the air is converged into the strong updraft of an intense thunderstorm, the rate of spin increases, which makes the colossal wind speeds we see in tornadoes. And that's Tornadoes 101. <laughs> the Weather Classroom will be right back. Right now, it's your local